I have been using the Canon EOS R5 as my main camera for landscape and wildlife photography for a bit more than two years now and after taking several hundred thousands of pictures I thought it's a good time to share my like long-term experiences with this camera the ups and downs would I still buy it now if I could again and actually what would make me buy the successor a potential Canon R5 Mark II and um, what would Canon need to do to make me buy this in a heartbeat <laughs> Let's start with image quality as this seems to be a really important point to many people. And I was coming from a Canon 5D Mark IV with a 30 megapixel full frame sensor and this one here has a 45 megapixel fra full frame sensor. So in the beginning I was a bit skeptical, I was not sure if the noise performance would suffer a bit from this. But on the contrary I need to say the R5 was really performing very well. Um, it was showing less noise also in high ISO than my 5D Mark IV and at the same time of course offering a, an edge in resolution and also the dynamic range was considerably better. Um, this is less important for me in wildlife photography but more in landscape photography where I shoot at 100 or 400 ISO and especially when taking pictures of a sunset it happens that I need to well push the shadows a bit in post and this gives me really a bit more flexibility here. But I also need to say that I don't need the 45 megapixels and if looking at some lower resolution cameras like for example the R6 that is actually cheaper um, it features a 20 megapixel sensor and in high ISO it's actually outperforming the R5 which is not so surprising given the lower megapixel count. So this just for me my conclusion is I'm quite happy with the sensor but something a bit lower would also have been fine in the high 30 meg um, 30s like 36 38 megapixels or something i would not lose so much details but also the whole workflow would be a bit faster and maybe in the high iso it would just be a bit better but even though I appreciate the better image quality of the R5 compared to the 5D Mark IV, this is not why I upgraded. The reason was the near, newly introduced Animal Eye autofocus from Canon and I was really eager to test it out and when I tried it the first time I was really, it was a game changer for me. It works so amazingly, at least in most situations, it just locks on the eye and you can afterwards compose the image as you want, you don't need to move the autofocus points around anymore. So this was really nice. After I tried it a bit more, I also realized that in some situations it's just reaching its limit. It's not detecting the eye properly. So I still use the joystick quite a lot. So I'm happy that it's here. But I, I would say 90% of the cases I use eye autofocus and the other 10% the other. And even if I don't use the eye autofocus, the whole autofocus system is just so much better than with uh, the 5D Mark IV or many other DSLRs so for the first time I really had the whole the whole sensor that was covered by the autofocus point so I could really also position my subject really a bit more in the corner if I wanted of course the autofocus is more precise and it just works a bit better with slow lenses this is why some lenses like the RF uh, 800 mm f11 were even possible this sounds all very nice but there is also one major drawback with the autofocus of the R5 and every other mirrorless camera at least that it's on the market now and that is that sometimes the autofocus is stuck on the background and there is just no way to make it focus on the on the subject which is closer and then you manually need to kind of intervene and bring it a bit closer so that's still annoying. Apart from the new autofocus system I was also really eager to have a camera again that is really quick. Um, it's shooting with 12 frames per second in the mechanical or first electronic uh, shutter. The only thing here is this really only works under ideal conditions so you need to have a shutter speed 1000 or shorter. Uh, if it's really cold or the batteries are not fully charged or you might have an older battery it's not working and it's dropping to I think 8 or 9 frames per second. Still not very slow but noticeable. And what I ended up doing more was actually switching to the complete electronic shutter. This gives me uh, 20 frames per second which coming from a DSLR was really fast. It's completely silent which can be nice for not distracting birds. Um, there is no shutter shock and so on. But it also comes with some downsides like a reduced bitrate of only 12 bit. And then you can have some rolling shutter effects. And this was the reason why I didn't use the electronic shutter for a while in the beginning. 
um, but I need to say I don't see the rolling shutter so often just if a bird is just about to take off and starting to spread the wings it can happen when it's in flight it's somehow not really happening and I also have the feeling it's more a problem with small birds like songbirds whereas with seagulls ducks um, birds of prey I really didn't have a problem at all kind of related to the frame rate is also the buffer size of the camera and I'm quite happy here with the R5 um, in the mechanical shutter I found it really hard to hit the buffer and even in the electronic shutter you can get I think a bit over 100 frames before it starts to slow down um, the thing is this is like five seconds of permanent shooting this is not happening so often but I had some situations like some fighting birds where I pressed down for longer because I could really not predict how the action would evolve and this is one of the reasons why I now switch to zero um, and with zero the buffer is really so big I never managed to hit it again of course when coming from a DSLR it's quite a change to suddenly have an electronic viewfinder and no optical anymore but I think it took me like two hours to adapt and afterwards I just said I don't want to go back. Um, yes, the electronic shutter still has some downsides, I will come to them in a minute, but for me it was so nice to see how the picture looks more, at least more or less, to have the option to show a histogram, to have a pr better level and all these benefits. Um, especially since I shoot most of the time in manual mode I just found it so much more convenient to set the proper exposure in the beginning so I don't want to come back and I'm also doing a fair bit of video and there it was also really nice to have this electronic viewfinder because especially with my big 600 millimeter prime it was quite annoying to start filming like this because I could not put it to the eye so here it was really welcome the downsides of the electronic viewfinder in my opinion are mostly that it's not the fastest model on the market like for example an R3 is quicker it's not having um, these slideshow effects if you take pictures and pan this is not terrible but I feel it kind of still influences my the tracking of birds negatively so this is something I would have liked to see a bit better all these specs and features are nice but in the end it's for me important that I can kind of customize my camera and change the settings I want really quickly and I think here this is so far the best camera I ever had in my hands disclaimer I did not use the R3 so far um, but otherwise for me it's almost perfect I have three dials for the first time ever so I can have really shutter aperture and ISO on a separate dial um, I can easily switch between the different shooting modes I really prefer this digital mode over the old one the, like the mechanical one it's a bit more the 1DX style um, the joystick was in the beginning a bit in a weird position and I still prefer where it was on the 5D Mark IV and many other cameras but you get used to this and I really like that it's taking basically the same batteries as Canon full frame and even some APS-C cameras since I don't know 12, 13 years now this LPE6 NH I think by now and I think battery life is an important important point of course battery life takes a hit if you come from a DSLR but overall it's also not too bad if there's a lot of action going on I managed to shoot 1500 pictures before the battery died so that's quite good just again if you shoot in the mechanical shutter keep in mind that as soon as the camera drops below 60 or 70 percent of the battery charge um, the frame rate will get low will get lower so there you might to need to swap the batteries a bit more and maybe you can also think about a battery grip where you can put two batteries in it as I said I'm doing a fair bit of video and here the R5 also had some really nice features for example the possibility to have uh, with 4k 120 frames a second of course the amazing eye autofocus the possibility to use the flip out screen which is also great for photography of course um, I can have different custom shooting modes for video as well so this was all very nice but what is with the overheating well this happened if I was in the high quality setting on 4k but I need to say even in the low quality setting the quality is not so bad so if it's warm I just tend to shoot uh, in the low quality setting it's still 4k so this is good enough um, yes this is something that could be improved but overall I don't want to complain about this too much so what would I like to see improved by future firmware updates 
first of all the camera was crashing a couple of times um, and more a couple of dozen times by now actually and it was worse in the beginning I had the feeling when I switched to the Wise cards I had less of a problem it only happened once or twice since then and I've taken at least 60,000 shots since then so this seems to have helped but I'm not completely sure what it is I can just say it happened more with my SanDisk cards um, otherwise um, I really enjoy some new of the features of the R7 or R3 like that you can have the millimeter that you have on your zoom shown in the viewfinder or in the LCD screen um, now from the R7 especially the focus stacking which is already happening in the camera the pre uh, pre-shooting the pre-recording that before you press the shutter button completely down is already buffering for like half a second and storing these pictures um, the automatic level that the camera has these are all these kind of things that I would like if Canon would just take them from the R7 and implement them in the R5 as far as I know I would say this is possible via firmware updates obviously hardware changes are not possible with firmware updates so I mean this camera is now two years old I think it will take at least one or maybe two more years until we see a successor of this one but what would I like to have in a successor and what would make me buy a, um, a successor the first and most important thing is fix this autofocus issue that basically all mirrorless cameras have um, I assume this would be done by having this quad pixel autofocus instead of a dual pixel um, autofocus here this would just helped me in so many situations I already lost some chances to or opportunities due to this so this would be priority number one um, I would also like to have instead of uh, one CF Express and one SD card two CF Express because only this would really allow me to shoot on two cards in parallel and I had a card failure once in my life I know many photographers that had also card failures so I would really like the opportunity to shoot on two cards at the same time without the SD card slowing down my whole workflow as I mentioned the rolling shutter is not too bad on the R5 it's way better than the EOS R or R7 but in some situations it's still visible so I think a stacked sensor would be really great I don't know how much this would in, um, lead to a price increase but might be worth it let's see and finally just a bit of faster viewfinder just without this slideshow effect this would help to track birds in flight so these were my experiences with the R5 after more than two years the question would I buy it again now yes definitely I would maybe if I have the time still wait to see if there's another cashback coming from Canon sometimes you can save 400 bucks or something just with waiting for the right timing but otherwise for me it's really one of the best full frame cameras on the market so I can highly recommend it and if you already have one and you want to have some help for the setup I already made a video about all my settings for the R5 for wildlife photography so be sure to check this out